Many plants prefer to grow on slightly acidic soils, in other words, seven or below. Blueberries perform best when the soil pH is acidic. About 4.5 to 5.2 is ideal, although various references may suggest a slightly different range. Dark green foliage is a good indicator of a healthy blueberry plant. Light green leaves may be due to lack of nitrogen, but when the leaves start to turn yellow with green veins, the plant is most likely suffering from an iron deficiency which we call iron chlorosis. Even though there may be plenty of iron in the soil, the plants are not able to utilize it. Plants pick up iron as ions dissolved in water. When the pH is too high, especially over 7.5, the iron in the soil forms insoluble compounds which the plants cannot pick up. Since iron is essential for chlorophyll production, that's the green pigment, the leaves will turn yellow as other pigments become predominant. You will see the problem first on the younger leaves. To correct this deficiency and improve the overall vigor of the plant, you need to lower the pH into the ideal range. This is what needs to be done. Step one, I need to know what the current pH is. I suggest testing the soil at your local land grant university. Contact your local university extension office for details. They're generally listed under the county government listings. In Michigan, it's called the Michigan State University Extension Service. The results can be expected back in about two weeks, depending on the time of the year that the sample is taken. Once you know the pH, you also need to know the soil texture. For example, if you have a sandy loam or a clay loam or an organic soil. This information should be included in the soil testing results. Step two, let's assume you have a pH of 7.3, which is slightly alkaline and you want to lower it to about 4.5 and you have a sandy loam soil. Subtract the 4.5 where you want to be from the 7.3 where you are now and that equals 2.8 and this number represents the drop in units needed to reach the 4.5. Now according to the chart on the screen to go from 7 to 4 means you need to add 1.2 plus 2.8 plus 2.8 pounds of sulfur, which equals 6.8 pounds of sulfur. So we might want to write, run it down to about uh, 6.5 to see how it goes, because we don't want to go down to 4, we want to be down about 4.5. And this is the amount that you're going to need per 100 square feet in order to lower the pH down to the level where you want to go. And it has to be tilled in down to about 7 inches. Step 3, it's best to apply the sulfur before planting, up to a year before planting if you can. The best time to apply it is when the soil is warm during summer going into the fall. The reason for the early application is that the soil bacteria degrade the sulfur and sulfuric acid is produced which lowers the soil pH. The sulfuric acid may be harmful to the roots, especially newly planted bushes. As I mentioned earlier, this process can take some time. It can happen faster if you use iron sulfate which is also called ferrous sulfate, but you need about five to seven times as much to get the same effect. So sulfur is the more economic choice. Aluminum sulfate will also work like iron sulfate, but I prefer not to add additional aluminum to the soil, which the plants don't use. Step four, test the soil again in a year to see how far the pH has dropped. This is not an exact science. Then test again after two to three years and make some additional applications a little bit at a time if you need to. One of the reasons you want to test two to three years later is most water sources except for rain tend to be slightly alkaline which will slowly increase the pH over time. I hope this has been helpful. This is Gary. Bye.